G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I had a few ideas for what I was hoping to do today and I've been trying to think on what I was going to do about getting a large grid ore detector onto one of my vehicles. The idea that I had in mind was to try and design a an extra trailer that could go between this trailer and the Goofy 2. But I think that's kind of uh, not the right way to think about this. The reason for that is with the length of the vehicle after adding that extra trailer, I would need to have more, well, I need to have more articulation at each of the joints so that I could actually drive up and over even some fairly gentle hills. But I would also want to have this done with advanced rotors which makes it very large and that really means that it's not a great option. Thinking back to Survival Maybe, my previous single player series where I built the Goose which had the intent of having multiple trailers and I never actually got around to building more than one additional trailer, I started to think maybe this is the way to go for this one. Maybe I should be using multiple trailers for the Goofy 2 and if I go down that road I could actually design a trailer that still has uh, maybe one turret on it, but also in place of this cargo container, I build a bit of a flat bed and then stick a large grid ore detector in where it would be because a large grid ore detector is actually the size of two of these large cargo containers because it'll be 10 by five by five on small grid being one by two in large grid. So I think that could be the way to go. It'll be a nice stable bed for such a large top heavy block. And it should mean that I'll still have some cargo capacity to, if I do find some good resources, actually pick them up while I'm out there. So I feel like that's probably the way to go. The other thing I've been thinking about is what to do with this battery. I want to turn it into a vehicle and I'm thinking I will go with some sort of motorbike, but I'm still not sure how to approach that. But we'll think about that afterwards. The first thing I need to do today is hop in here, go to my vent and switch it off. Because if you have a look at the batteries, they're currently using, well, they're currently outputting just over 100 kilowatts. This thing requires 100 kilowatts. If I turn it off, the batteries are now outputting less than 10. So worth having it off considering this oxygen tank is now full and I think it's going to take a long time before I empty that. And speaking of turning vents off, let's check if this one is off. Let's turn it off as well, since that oxygen tank is also full. And now on to what I had to do at the start of today, which is collect some stone so that I can get some nickel. So if I go and collect a bunch of stone now, I should collect enough materials for me to potentially build a connector onto the base and do possibly a couple of loads of stone just to try and get enough nickel to build the motors that I might need for a variety of other bits for the second trailer and for the motorbike because that's what I think I'll try and get onto today. It'd be nice to be able to do some exploring now and possibly find some underground nickel or maybe some underground iron. just at least something. <laughs> Maybe even a few extra boulders would probably be helpful. I haven't used up all the boulders that I've found so far, but it feels like waiting until I do is flawed in terms of logic. It seems like it would make more sense to try and find new ones before I run out. Now, soften my suspension. Oh dear. Oh dear, dear, dear. No, let's turn those off because that's going to get annoying. I'm low on O2 and I don't have a vent on here yet. If I get some ice, it should get into those O2H2 generators. And it looks like I'm filling up. Yep, 72. Cool. So I'll be able to breathe as long as I have enough ice. Good. <laughs> I should have looked at that before I left. But... Thankfully, this thing is capable of keeping me alive regardless of my stupidity. All right, since I'm going to be using a fair bit of stone to get the nickel and silicon for the time being, or at least the nickel, because I could mine silicon straight from one of the boulders I found, what I think I will do is 
build the connector first so that I've got an offload capability or the capability to offload my stuff without having to do this by hand. Now what I'm thinking for that would be an advanced rotor on this conveyor junction here with a conversion to small grid and then a few small grid conveyors and then a small grid connector on the end. One of the reasons I've been really hesitant to build a connector up uh, previous to this point is that connectors are really expensive. If I can get in here and get myself a bottle first, I can then jump to there. Large grid connectors, 130 steel plate, 40 construction components. That adds up to quite a lot of iron. So I'd been avoiding doing that for that reason. I really didn't want to use up all that iron on a connector that I didn't think was going to end up in the position where it would finally end up. So it was going to be something I would have to grind down or manually handle and move to where I wanted it, which for connectors is not particularly easy. But it's been pointed out to me a number of times and I think I've gotten to the point where I've got enough resources to feel confident about this. Perhaps the efficiency gain of having a connector is worth the cost of the lost components because of how much time it will save me in the interim before the final connector is built. And you know what? I gotta agree with that. The opportunity cost of not having a connector is too high. So I am better off building the connector and wasting that material than I am going without it. And I need to get better at thinking that way given that I'm playing with ore scrap. I need to just consider that as, yeah, there's some lost material, but if it gains me enough to cover that loss, it's worth it. And I strongly believe that a connector set up the way that I'm thinking will be worth it. Although it probably wouldn't have been worth it prior to piping all of this system up. Ooh, that reminds me, before I do that, let's go to the O2H2 gen and turn its used conveyor system off so it doesn't steal all the ice from the Goofy 2. So I do not want it to do that. I think I'm going to have to do most of this by hand since I had almost no nickel left and I need enough nickel to build the motors for what I'm building here. So I'll just empty out as much as I can and then start the construction and see how we go, see how much more we need. Okay, production. We need large blocks, rotor, advanced rotor. Build me the stuff for that. Then we need small blocks, conveyor, need uh, probably two of those and two of those. Then a connector, so I need 50 nickel and how much do I have at present? Six, 35 and a that's not too bad. I'll just keep emptying this out until that's all done. I think I'm about to run out of ice. Oh, that ladybug is coming straight for me. All right, while that's going on, let's just get out of here. Oh dear. Um, oh dear. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 2.5, 2.49. Uh, which direction is it coming? I can't tell. I think it's just heading straight. So I might go off to the left here. I think that looks like a smoother path. Whoa! Jeez, slaloming through the trees. Not fun. I mean, kind of fun. <laughs> Terrifying. Oh, I thought I'd lost control for a second there. 2.46, 2.47. Let's try and go far enough off to the side here. Oh, I hope I have enough oxygen to last. Let's turn off my engines because I'm running out of hydrogen now. So I'm out of ice. Whoa! Okay. You are handling a lot better than I thought you would, Goofy 2. Considering the speeds I'm pushing you through while still partially loaded with stone. So this is why I need to get that motorbike because that's what I would have hopped in to run away from the... Uh, Ladybug, which sounds ridiculous. It's kind of cool. I'm glad I named it the Ladybug <laughs> now, because <laughs> running away from one just does sound a bit silly. Ooh. Can I 
get up there. I could get up there. Okay, let's see if I can go far enough that way. Let's get out of its way. I, I don't want to do that thing that you always see in movies of running straight away from the car when you should run like perpendicular to its direction of travel, not parallel with it since it can chase you. If you run perpendicular, you can use your mobility to outrange it. Is that, is that good? Am I good? I might be okay. Oh great, I'm gonna have to mine something. So I'm gonna be suffocating shortly. I would have thought the cockpit would hold. Hang on. Nope, that's worse. What the... What are you shooting at? What's over here? What the... Um... What? Okay, there appears to be a piece of wreck in wreckage over here. Well, in that case, park brakes on, wheels off, quickly drill some ice, or just grab some of Inventory that. Full. Come on, 23, how much ice have I got? Oh, my engines are my engines aren't on, so the all of the O2 will be going to me. 35, 36. I might want to grind down these bits. Cool. I guess something didn't handle the high gravity. I'm going to take that as a win. I've done my best to make sure that the current assertive cargo ships mod plays nicely with Omicron, but it's been a bit of a well, it's been a bit slightly tough testing process to do so because I have needed to trial out a bunch of different Inventory designs for different done. ships to make sure that they can cope with the grav and even after thinking I had it right a couple of times I have not been correct and it has actually been that I've run out uh, been that the ships have crashed due to the high gravity so I may find more wreckage like this strewn about the place but Hopefully not too much, since I don't really want to give myself this much stuff all the time. Turns away. Turns out that running away like a scared little child worked brilliantly. There's no way would I have explored over to here. Plus, having my turrets on was the only reason I found this. Time to head on home. Helps if my wheels are actually on. Head home a little bit more cautiously than I headed out here maybe stop off at a few of those boulders I saw along the way if I see them on my way back. I think I'm at two trees for this series so far, which by my standards is pretty dang good. Normally at two trees per five minutes. I guess if I ever go large grid vehicle then we'll see a whole bunch of deforestation happen, but for now, while I'm sticking with small grid, I think we're pretty safe. I don't know where those boulders were that I passed, but I did not see them on my return trip. Okay, getting a bit of, I wonder if I get any nickel. Ooh, that's a good load of nickel. It's a good load of iron too, that was, that was quite good. I'm sure I've got other words in my vocabulary, it's just right now I'm not using them. Uh, good, uh, positive, oh, <laughs> I'm actually drawing a blank. All right, forget about the synonyms to good, let's build this connector. Advanced rotor. Like so. Might even move the Goofy 2 in a bit closer here so that I can use it as a stepping stool of sorts. So I can reach the height that I need to to get at this thing. And then add small head. Let's row to lock it for the time being. And then it'll be... Nope, wrong key. Curve. Actually, let's go this way because that'll make it easier. Curve, then straight, straight. Oh, well, I need three. Yeah, I might need to go three. And it'll be curve on the end here, pointing out, followed by a connector. 
Obviously, I could have made this a bit cheaper had I had a junction closer to the ground, but this won't work out too expensive. I might have put an extra piece in that I didn't need to. I was just a bit worried that I wouldn't be able to reach low enough to get down to the height of the connector of the Goofy 2, given that the, there's a bit of a divot in the ground there. Okay, swing that out of the way so I don't smack it when I move the Goofy 2, and we'll be able to connect to the base. Which is great, because then I can passively charge from the wind turbines, and that will be a great encouragement, encouragement? encouragement to get some more of them built since it'll be nice to be able to charge the batteries off that sort of thing rather than having to all the time charge off the hydrogen engines. She's always a bit more time consuming because I have to mine all of the ice for it. Obviously the advantage of using an advanced rotor and an arm to adjust height like this versus using a piston is that if I wanted to use a piston I'd have to use large grid pistons and that takes up a lot of space and is a bit more expensive. With small grid pistons, I wouldn't be able to transfer components between these things, so that would also be less than ideal. And with an advanced rotor that's set up like this, I can do it all, transfer both across, and it doesn't take up as much space. So there are a couple of advantages to setting, it, setting up this sort of connector system with an advanced rotor instead of trying to go pistons. And now all the stones should be going to the refineries that it is Getting automatically moved across and once it's all moved across I will go back down and probably collect some more because that's still not an awful lot of ink, uh, nickel when it takes six I think no 1.67 well, that's not so bad I thought it was six for a motor I don't know why I had that in my head that's not bad at all I think I'll still go get another load while it's light out and then come nightfall try and start work on the trailer with the large grid detector on it and it's all getting processed let's go back down to the mine oh vent vent before i go oh no 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 ah adjustment to the goofy that i wanted to make yes let's do that okay well that's on are my gyros set up properly because i'm going to disconnect yes they are no that was off Turn you on. Then disconnect. Handbrake off. And let's park there. So what I want to do with the Goofy 2 is something I was thinking about at the time I made it, which is getting rid of this advanced rotor that's on here. Popping a medium cargo on there. Which I should have the parts on me to be able to do, but I don't. Because I dropped them all. So popping this on the back of that O2H2 gen like so and then putting the advanced rotor on. It'll make this a little bit longer and not able to reach quite so high but I think for the extra balance it will give it should be worth doing. And then get this rotor built by jumping a whole lot. Oh, I'm almost done I may as well just keep jumping. I was gonna run around to the front. And detach head, hit myself in the face with it, luckily that didn't hurt me. Cool, so that gives me a bit of extra storage on the Goofy 2 and should still give us a reasonable range of motion. The other thing it's going to give me space to do is something that I think will work out quite well. These blocks are pretty effective at stopping me from scraping on the ground or doing too much damage, but they're not as effective as a suspension. So what I'm thinking of doing, in fact what I'm going to do, is place a couple of 1x1 suspensions at the back, roughly like that. And I'll set these up with zero friction. And I unfortunately used the wrong side on each side, but whatever. I'm going to set them up with zero friction. Those will be able to smack into the ground pretty hard without doing any damage to anywhere on the Goofy 2. And they'll be able to slide, I'll be able to slide on them when I'm just driving around with the Goofy. So it should give me some increased maneuverability when the Goofy 2 is the only thing I'm driving around with when I don't have the trailer attached. 
And I don't seem to be able to walk up this cockpit, which is kind of annoying. Yeah. Let me up. Let me up. There we go. Nice little skids for it, basically. So we should be able to ride in that position. Take my parking brake off. And I can actually drive around in this position. Which is easier to do and requires less gyro overrides. I can just override myself till I go into this position. And it's going to make driving around a lot simpler. Doesn't help me with connecting because it's set too low deliberately because I want those drills to be able to pitch up that high. But this should work quite nicely, I think. I feel like it's a nice addition to the Goofy 2. Plus it gives me another couple of conveyor ports to add a vent and maybe something else to later. Gently. And I need to replace those with the current rotor. Attach. Attach. And lock on. And there we go. A little bit of a longer wheelbase, but I think we'll still manage. Definitely worth it, I think. Alright, let's go collect another load of stone for that nickel. Load number two delivered. How are we looking for nickel right now? 62, 28. That, yeah, that's pretty solid. I'm happy with that. That is good enough. Good enough to build a new trailer? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going the trailer first. I do think it makes some sense to do it that way. Probably. For the trailer, I am going to need to basically follow the model of this one over here. For the most part, so let's start by bringing that out to there. And then I will place... That's higher than the other one, isn't it? I think so. And I should be able to place my connector straight on there. Okay, I may have some interesting times trying to get the uh, wheels on. Yeah, well. I will survive. I will manage somehow. So, medium cargo container? Or do I want to go O2H2? 2 gen. If I go on O2H2 gen, it'll be a bit shorter, but it'll give me the room I need for the flatbed and the connector I need as well. Although, if I rotate that downward, yeah, that'll work. So if I put the medium cargo container downward like that, then I should be able to go with conveyor junctions, and that'll be where the wheels attach. Don't need the advanced convey the advanced rotor to be piped. So if I put a couple of pipes across. I need this to be seven blocks long. Let's do one, two, then one, two, three. Then the advanced rotor will sit on top of that. Then two more pipes. And let's have a look where the wheels are gonna sit. Five, five right there, five by five left. Here. I made this too short. I'm gonna... Oh, how am I gonna get these wheels on? I need to build a piston or something. It's really annoying. Oh well. What are you gonna do? Or I'll have to finish this rotor so that I can spin this thing. Well, actually... So, are you locked? Unlock. i push you a bit. Can I get that up on my thing? Add wheel. <laughs> then, yes, this will work. We set our height offset as high as we can go. And we do the same on this side. Can I push it any further? Come on. There we go. Both wheels achieved. <laughs> That's using physics. Uh, of some description. I don't know if, if you can really call that physics. But it worked. Whatever. We have wheels on those two rear ones. That's what I needed. Partially so that I can do this. Which will allow me to place our advanced rotor in the middle. Grind off the advanced rotor. Ah, oh, I ground the wrong bit! I should have been looking. I was not looking at my tooltips. Rotor part. Now, the tricky bit of this thing is dropping a large grid advanced rotor part 
down onto that so that it can attach. Rats. Oh, that should be good. Attach before you fall off. There we go. A little bit of iron wasted, but not too bad. It's a necessary thing with this, really. Okay, so we've got our advanced large grid rotor part. Let's drop our displacement down. Let's turn rotor lock on. And then I'll be putting my large grid auto detector on top of that, which is going to be pretty tall. Ugh. Energy it's low. taller than I envisaged. I possibly could have made this whole thing a little bit lower and slung it down under there, put the rotor down a bit lower, but... Uh, it is what it is now, I think. I think I'll just live with that. Right, so I think I will then pop two more conveyor junctions like that, and then the next set of wheels. So that'll be 5x5 five five rights. And that's very close to the ground, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do my trick to get the wheels on there. All right, now that we've got this set up where we've got our cargo container leading pipes underneath, I should be able to put in O2H2 generators and maybe a large cargo, although maybe I'll just go a medium cargo rather than making this too heavy. Uh, large grid blocks on small grid vehicles, their weight just from components alone adds up pretty rapidly. So O2H2 gen, if I put it like this, I'll only need to have a single curve to hook it up. Like so. Then that's hooked up. And that should work with a large container to enable me to have the turret set up that I've got on the other goofy, the other trailer. This one's a little bit longer and the wheelbase is a bit more spread out at the rear, but I'm kind of happy that that works. I do need to figure out where I'm going to put a battery or two on this, especially since it's got the ore detector and I may at times forget to turn it off. I think having decent amounts of battery power is going to be very, very important. I wonder if I could fit one under here. No, not a chance. Could strap them to the side here, maybe. Yeah. I won't add this one yet until I've got that wheel on, as I'm getting a little bit suspicious it might get in the way of the wheels placement, so I don't want to do that. Time for the welding. Oh, I just noticed. I'm still in my Christmas suit. It's not too far after Christmas for that to be really, really uncool. I suppose I should <laughs> really remember to change that. Unfortunately, since I've only got a survival kit, I can't actually change my suit at the moment. Uh, I will need to do that in the menu later, but because I have my spectator camera PCs hooked up, to this, I am not going to quit the game and reload just to change my suit right now, as that won't really work. Now, do I have enough materials for this? Nickel, 103. Energy critical. Ooh, I think I might just. 117. Yeah. Alright, let's get this ore detector on the top. Right, it's going to have to point upwards. Can I really not make it point? Oh, hang on. Let's see if I... Set this rotor displacement to its maximum. Will that give me enough? Ah, oh, rats. It's so close. Oh. That is so close to being able to work. I'm seriously tempted to put just a little spacer in there so that I don't have to place this pointing upwards. But would that make my center of mass higher than just having this pointing upwards? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, this thing's fairly expensive, so I don't really want to have to rebuild it. Oh, I can't put a spacer in, because this is large grid. Upright it goes. I'd have to grind off the whole rotor contraption, then build it with small grid, but there's no spacer in large grid that I can use that will just move it up a little bit. So, decision made. I was troubling myself over something I could not control. And there we are. Let's drop this down as low as it can go. 
And... Roadlock is on. I think I should probably have Share and Ocean Tensor on. Sweet. <laughs> that looks enormous. <laughs> wow. Okay. And I think to make this safe for the detachment from the base... Oh, weird. Clipping through the ground. I need to detach from here. Then we go and hook up. And then I'll detach from the base. There we go. Attached. Softened suspension so it doesn't launch this straight up in the air when I grind off those blocks. In fact, let's soften these. Oh wait, they're all strength at six. That'll be fine. Uh, let's turn you off. Because you're probably using a moderate amount of power. And small conveyor. We're detached. Oh no. I don't think I've got enough nickel for the power cells. I do not. Arr, rats. Hmm. I can probably live without that battery for the time being, I think. Oh, one thing I th should do is potentially name all of the blocks on this trailer the same way I've named the ones on this one. That way my hotbar controls will sensibly flick back and forth between the two. I know what I'm going to do next time now. Yes. So I was hoping to build the motorbike this time, but I think I'm going to save that for the next round because this trailer took a fair bit of resources to put together. What I think I'm going to do for next time is I will build the motorbike, but I'm also going to try and get some of the daily needs stuff onto this base so that I'm not constantly needing to rely on the stuff that's aboard here. So having a look at this, how are these batteries going? I think it's running fairly neutral right now. Mm, no, they're, they're going pretty well, actually. Slowly charging up. Let's go for a bit of an explore. I might go off in the direction that I ran off to before when I was escaping earlier. Since I've explored much of the stuff in the direction... off in that direction. So this is probably make a bit more sense. Hopefully find a few boulders. Maybe, if I'm really lucky, find an underground deposit. Maybe. Oh, hold up. I just realised something. Oh! You know better than this, Splitzy. I didn't have my range set to max. Ugh. Alright, we've got silicon here. And now that my range is set to 150 metres, hopefully, I might stumble upon some underground ore that I really wasn't going to have much chance of stumbling upon at 75 metres of range. Even at 150, I think finding underground ore may be a bit of a challenge. And maybe some modded ore detectors will become necessary at some point. Not yet. Uh... I don't think we're at that point, but it's something I am considering as an option. Basically, an ore detector that would be... Is that 2.52? Two? That's 5.2. Yeah, 5.2. Basically, an ore detector that would be more expensive to build would be a lot more expensive to operate from a power consumption point of view, so that would make it limited in its applicability, particularly trying to do something like this on a small grid, so that I'd have to engineer some way around the cost of it. At least I found a couple of boulders. But that's something I'm contemplating. I haven't decided one way or the other on that little issue just yet. Yeah. Oh, nickel. Nickel! That's underground nickel, I think. <gasps> yes! Oh yes! <laughs> Okay, uh, I take all that stuff about modded ore detectors back. If I can manage to find stuff with a vanilla one, there is... Basically the only reason to add modded ones would be to make my life easier, and... Well, I think we all know how masochistic I am given this series, so that's not likely to be something that happens. Uh, I mean, even if this is above ground nickel, it'll still be handy, because... I'm very, very short on the old nickel. Having to mind stone to collect it is bleh. It's just annoying. Come on. Where's my nickel? There's my nickel! There you are, underground! Oh yeah. We have our first underground ore deposit. That shouldn't be such an exciting moment, but it kinda is! 
Uh, I'm going to need to come up with a separate naming scheme so that underground ones get priority. So to home, that is 2.94. What I think I will do is name boulders separately to like put an additional thing on the boulders to make them stand out. Do I try and collect some with the Goofy 2 before returning home? I think I should. Which way is that ladybug going? Oh, you rotten ladybug! That's not fair. It's coming directly this way. And quickly. Oh man, it is coming quickly and I don't think I put ammo in the turret. Don't you roll, don't you roll. Um, two, four, four, wheels on. Okay, making distance. Oh, it's just rude. No, it's catching me. What speed am I going? 32 meters a second. Okay, I gotta get home. I'm just gonna go for home. There are bigger turrets there that can take out the drone rather than me losing this trailer the day I make it. way. Oh, that is steep. That is very steep. I really need that motorbike. <laughs> I was thinking it wasn't that necessary, but for the frequency with which these things seem to want to fly straight over me, I need an escape vehicle that I can take more risks in because it's cheaper to build and to rebuild. I'm also going to have to start considering how I'm going to place defences around this valley to protect me in the event that I do get surprised, which is usually me not paying attention, but surprised when something comes after me. Okay, we are home. Is it coming straight over me at home? Ooh, I might just make it. I might be safe. I think I will be. Looks like it's almost at its closest point and I was able to safely get around it with 1.9 k's away. Let's get a little bit of ammunition and put it into that turret. Because if I detach now... Oh, that appears to be safe. So that means I could go and grab this trailer, take it over to the mining deposit. Oh, you know, blow stuff up. That means I can't actually go and mine a thing because I lost my connector. Grr. <laughs> Why? Why did I do that? Why wasn't I more careful? <sighs> you, I should have stopped this recording earlier rather than continuing on. Uh, all right. Down to mine some stone. I'm not quite sure how I reversed so hard that I blew up both the rotor and the rotor part then. I mean, I'm glad I didn't blow up anything more serious than that, but I don't quite know how I put that much force behind it. I thought I was being quite gentle, but apparently not. Rotor repaired. Replaced, I should say. And I can finish this battery off. And I've left the ore detector on, which was stupid. And I should probably turn off these two batteries, since this isn't hooked up to the base. Two more drills. And this is probably a good time for me to uh, change up the colouring of them a little bit. So one there, another one on that side, and that'll give me the width I need to nicely drive along whatever tunnel I drill. Assuming I don't accidentally drill too hard into the ground. <laughs> that would be problematic. Uh, and it was suggested that I try this for the colouring. Middle one, white, and then the outers in red. Although now that I'm going five, I might go middle three white and outer two red. And with five drills across the front, I am very glad that I put the cargo container on the back here since... Ooh, hold up. This might be a problem. I wonder how much of a problem the suspension traveling up to where these drills are will be. Ugh, there's not much I can do about it now though. Oh well, guess we'll find out. I may have to just run with that suspension being strong all the time, which is going to limit 
my ability to adjust pitch when I'm attached to the trailer. Stone ejection. Let me just hook one off this side for now and then think about a better system later on down the line. I guess probably what would have been smart to do on the other side was put a small conveyor down because then I could put a sorter and then an ejector off to the side and then would have still had room for the vent. Alas, I did not do that, so this is what we're going to do. I think all the stone has, yep, been done, so time to head off. So next time, I am going to attempt to drill some underground ore. Maybe. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm definitely going to attempt it. We'll see how successful I am at collecting some of that nickel. And once I've got that nickel, I'm going to head home, I'm going to build a motorbike, and hopefully do some other things. So there's all that. And plenty more to come, and I will see you then.